on here guys and today we are talking about a few of these really incredible experimental resin printed pods these are a couple that were sent to me as a sample from christopher he works for one of the companies that uh, works with these printers so thanks a lot to him for getting these in my hands um, these were printed on the projet 2500 printer now this is not a resin printer like the elegu and it's not an fdm printer that pushes filaments through a hot end like the ender threes this printer uses multi-jet technology with just something super high-end and advanced in fact the base price of this printer starts out at forty three thousand dollars and i would think that reasonably equipped you could really make that price skyrocket because all, all of the incredible features let me just read some of the tech specs on this printing uh, dynamo machine it has a maximum build capacity of 294 by 211 by 144 millimeters so the build volume is somewhere around between like a cr10 and an ender 3 it's not super tall in the build volume but the overall uh size is somewhere in the round it has a really high resolution of 1600 by 900 by 790 dpi and is capable of printing rigid engineering grade high temperature resistant elastometric prints they can do like opaque sort of colors it looks almost like it's translucent glowing it's really really cool um, so that's kind of the technology that's being used for this now i have seen some other recent um, resin prints i think brain 3d is playing with a similar technology i'm guessing it's not done on this printer but it also looks very very strong now these are two different types of materials this one is super super flexible and this one is super super rigid now when i first saw the pictures i thought this thing is going to crack i've seen and actually experimented with some resin prints um, campfire quads this is actually a nylon version of their of their uh, canopy they briefly experimented with some resin prints that were sort of translucent like this this is definitely smoother and higher higher resolution it looks almost like it was casted you can see no print lines on there whatsoever the technology is incredible um, but uh, the standard for us has really been these nylon for the most strength uh, they experimented with the um, resin prints. They were really, really cool. You could kind of see through them a little bit, see your components inside the pod, uh, but they just shattered if you hit a gate. Um, so we've been paying these nylons. Um, we've been buying these nylon pods. They're usually run about 20 to 25 to 30 dollars. Uh, and they work great, but even these after a, a long enough time and a number, number of hits will crack you can see it's cracked right there from a lot of gate hits this is this quad has been up and running for like what two and a half years it just won't die <laughs> it has the 25 dollar racer star you see in this thing this is also another example of a nylon pod this is the floss three uh, with a nylon pod and you can see i actually did crack this right there so any pod even nylon which is generally the standard for the most strength can still tear they, they seem to tear more than like crack or explode then you also have something like this this is the mayday designed fusion drones fusion frame uh, and i have versions of this pod in nylon and tpu but this is tpu right here and you can see the saint smart tpu if you use a high infill is actually pretty rigid and with uh, in conjunction with the brace up front i feel pretty comfortable flying this i have had no issues crashing this so far but i would think in a hard enough hit it would probably tear similar to the nylon i don't think this is quite as strong in the, as the nylon uh, and then this is the concrete quad this is the quadcopter that i had this experimental pod on and i'll show you the crash that finally did it 
Uh, so can I recommend this? Well, as you can see, I just put the top plate back on and no worries at all, no issues. So it did its job, even though it did shatter, it protected all of the components inside and it even protected the camera. And that was an extremely hard hit that it took. Now you can notice this particular concrete quad is a budget racing build. So I'm not running the front base because of that additional cost. I probably will add one. So that may have actually saved this, but a lot of frames don't necessarily run a brace. So I didn't want to fly it like that. And to be fair, this lasted three, four, five races. I took it to several events and several practice sessions on my own outside of the races. This took about a dozen medium hit, um, medium and light crashes. Um, so normal use, it actually survived its purpose. And a full hit, like the one that actually shattered it, would probably have torn any of the pods that I showed you before. And like I said, it did its job protecting all the components and the camera. So let's take a little bit of closer look on the bench. So is this technology ready for prime time? Well, I asked Chris, how much would it cost to buy this pod? And he said, because of the cost of how their printers in this material and the fact the printers are so um, high demand and so expensive that you actually end up factoring in something called machine time. So you actually have to budget the time used for the machine. So this would have costed $126. Ah! Now I asked this after I had already smashed it. Uh, and when he told me that, I just felt... $187? Yeah. Ah! Ah! They really screw you, don't they? Sick. I was like, oh my gosh, dude. If I would have known it was that much, I would have just hung it on the wall and framed it or something. Um, but I'm glad I didn't know because I really wanted to get a realistic test. And it lasted through all my crashes. It was pretty much a full speed, long straight away punch and I hit directly in the corner of a gate. And the corner of the gate is the hardest part because you have, you know, the two gate pieces coming together and your hinge on the outside. So it's really, really rigid and hard. Uh, and that's what finally did it guys. So he basically said he did this as a personal test and experiment for himself. And when I commented some interest on it, he um, sent these to me, so thanks again for that. This has been an awesome test. I'm really curious, um, Brian over at Brain3D, if you wanna send me one of what you're working on, I'm happy to put it through the test as well. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's a different technology, but the results are pretty similar um, in this. Now, Yvonne, he is, uh, a little skeptical as I was, but uh, I think that, you know, nothing is invincible. Uh, one concern that he expressed was that these will shatter, whereas these other things will, will tear, um, which could potentially be less damaging. There was a few um, examples online where people were smashing with hammers. So here's Yvonne's video. He sent me of him smashing a nylon pod with a hammer. which survived just fine. So what do you think guys? I think if they can create these and manufacture these for around the similar prices the nylon, it would definitely be an attractive alternate option. Uh, and that pretty much leaves you with 20 to $30 range to play with. If these end up costing $50, I think a few people may still jump in any more than that. And like, it's just too high. Very cool though, really awesome technology. I can't believe that you can manufacture something like this, even in a machine as premium as that, the, imp the results are impressive. It totally blows away any uh, consumer grade equipment that I've ever seen. And I've been messing with 3D printers for now for 20 years. I had access to a 3D printer that printed with like a powder uh, back in 99 or 2000 when I worked in that NASA robotics lab. And I you know, printed out a few parts that I had you know, modeled up in Pro Engineer uh, back then when I was doing some modeling work and uh, 
that those prints back then were not even as strong as like PLA out of an Ender 3. They were super, super brittle. It was really just for getting, you know, size and relationship or being able to take to a meeting, but you couldn't use it for anything. It was just like a visual demonstration kind of thing. The, this is an absolutely beautiful product that you absolutely could use for anything. Thanks guys.